Igniting Hope Ministries welcomes you. Prepare yourself to listen to a message that will spark hope and renew your mind. Hi, Steve Backlund here from Igniting Hope Ministries. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. The title of today's message is Expect the Unexpected. Let me say it again. Expect the Unexpected. As I get into this topic, I I think it's important to talk about the difference between faith and hope. Hebrews 11 says, faith is the evidence of things hoped for. Hope is the soil that faith puts its roots in. Hope is an overall optimistic attitude about the future based on the goodness and promises of God. Hope is an overall optimistic attitude about the future based on the goodness and promises of God. And when we consider the difference about faith and about hope, faith is more specific while hope is more general. Faith says God's going to do this. I believe this is going to happen. Hope says, I don't know what's going to happen, but good things are coming. Faith says, I'm going to enter into this prophetic calling. Hope says, even if I don't, I'm going to thrive in life. Faith says, I'm going to get married. Hope says, even if I don't get married, I'm going to thrive and I'm going to thrive while I'm waiting. Faith without hope is unhealthy. Hope is what makes our faith healthy. Hope is the safety net for when what we believe for in faith doesn't happen. People who don't value hope but value faith tend to have a greater difficulty overcoming disappointment. And this is really important as we talk about expect the unexpected. Because hope people are going to be more prone to embrace the unexpected, see the unexpected, see God in that which when he comes in a way that we didn't think he was going to come in. But faith people without hope tend to be more tunnel vision and are believing for specific things to happen. And that often blinds them to what God is doing. I mean, the the best example of this is when Jesus came into the world, Messiah came, and the Pharisees, the religious leaders of the day, those who were supposedly the closest people to God in their time, missed it. And they missed it because they had a preconceived idea of what Messiah was going to do. They had a preconceived idea that he would bring a political freedom, would break off political oppression. And that's not how Jesus came. And only a few understood, only a few knew. What was going on? The shepherds, the wise men, Simeon and Anna in the temple. Now, many people, as we think about this, many people miss what God is doing because of preconceived notions of who he will use, (laughs) how it will look. And believing future revivals should look like previous ones. Let me say that again. Many people miss what God is doing because of preconceived notions of who he will use, how it will look, or believing future revivals should look like previous ones. Now, in my lifetime, there's been many different ways God has manifested that were unusual, unexpected. (laughs) Like in the late 60s, early 70s, a a movement called the Jesus People Movement. All these hippies getting saved. 
They started going to church. They had long hair, sometimes were smelly. They didn't wear shoes at times. And, and it, it didn't look like how revival had looked like in the past. It didn't look like suit and tie revival. <laughs> And many missed it. During the same time, there's what's called the charismatic uh, revival or renewal, where in mainline churches, Episcopalian, Presbyterian, and in the Catholic Church, the Holy Spirit fell with speaking in tongues, miracles, powerful encounters. It, It came to a people that it was unexpected by many. Or the Toronto Blessing. What happened in Toronto in the in the mid to late 90s of the manifestation of the spirit and people shaking, people laughing, people making all kinds of noises, people being carried out of meetings, uh, just having to be carried into cars and because of the fullness. Of, it, it didn't come as it, it was expected. And, and many people missed it. Many people criticized. I, one of the books I wrote is called Help Him a Pastor. I love that book. It's, I love senior pastors. I love church leaders. I love the church. And it's a fun book. If you're, if you're a church leader or a, you're moving in that direction, that book, it has 80 core values of, uh, for leadership, which makes you proactive, not reactive in your leadership, has 50 scenarios that we wish we were taught, but probably weren't in Bible school or seminary at two pages per scenario. It's a fun book. But one of the core values that I have in the book is this. I recognize the tendencies that current moves of God are often persecuted by those impacted by a previous move of God. Let me read that again. I recognize the tendency that current moves of God are often persecuted by those impacted by a previous move of God. And I go on to explain this core value by saying, because of this, I withhold judgment against new things happening or new doctrinal emphases until I actually understand what is happening. I realize most great truths or outpourings are messy at first. I will not let excesses or weird spiritual happenings cause me to do a pendulumic swing reaction to the other extreme. I will always look for what God is doing in the midst of seeming excesses or apparent theological extremes. Expect the unexpected. And this is this message is not just for church happenings or the you know greater moves of God, what we might call manifestations of revival, which this certainly this message applies to that, but it also applies in our lives of knowing that even what God's going to be doing in our life, in your life, doesn't necessarily line up with our expect expectations. And this is why, again, hope is so important. This is Igniting Hope Ministries. We're here to ignite your hope. And when we have hope, and I say this, that hope people have many options. Faith people without hope don't have many options because they're believing for something. And often faith people without hope actually are living under a spirit of heaviness because they believe they can't thrive until they're in the promise of what they're believing God for. And so there's actually a, a spirit of heaviness that that is there. Now, and let me go on a little side trail here. I've been talking about this in previous podcasts, but I want to say it again here. Psalm 37, verse 4 says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you 
the desires of your heart. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. This is talking about delighting in seasons of unfulfilled desires. <laughs> and this is what I hope people do. They delight while they're waiting for a desire to be fulfilled. And you know what that verse says? It says the delighting is actually going to be a key for that desire to be given to us to be fulfilled. And again, this is just so important as we're thinking about expect the unexpected. That as we live in that delighting state, and here's, the, here's what the delighter says to the Lord about an area that is a desire to see a breakthrough, improvement, whatever in an area. The delighter says, Lord, uh, I'm so excited. I can't wait to see what you're going to do about this. I can't wait to see what you're going to do about this family need. I can't wait to see what you're going to do about this financial situation. I can't wait to see what you're going to do about my nation. And it's in that attitude that we're open to different ways. We're, we're not locked in that it has to look this way or that way, personally. And, you know, just... Uh, and one last thing I want to say before I begin to wrap this up today. By the way, somebody is listening right now, a first-time listener, and I'm hearing the Lord say to you that, that this message and this ministry that we have is going to be a key in this, new, in this next season of your life because it's going, to, it's going to add the finishing touches on what you've already, where you've already come from and what you already know. But, you know, one of, one of the classic ex, expect the unexpected is Jesus. He tells his disciples, he says, hey, it's to your advantage that I leave you. It's to your advantage that I leave you. <laughs> and I, I don't think they thought that, but ultimately it was because they were going to receive the Holy Spirit, get born again, empowered. And by the way, again, I want to just say this. Somebody who's listening, uh, because the, the disciples said, we're losing the most important thing in our life. We're losing Jesus. <laughs> and some of you have, are maybe losing something that's been very important to you. Maybe it's a person. Maybe it's a job. Uh, maybe it's a, a position. Uh, whatever. And, and I'm hearing these words, ultimately, it's going to be to your advantage. Ultimately, you're going to look back on that and you're going to say, that was the change. I was listening to Joel Osteen and his father died suddenly uh, in about 1998-99. And he was his best friend after his wife. And, and it was grievous. It was hurtful. But ultimately, that is what open the door for him to become what he's become and to influence the nations in an incredible way. But it's interesting. He said, hey, I'm going to I'm going and see your advantage. And then he dies, gets raised from the dead, uh, ascends to heaven. Before he ascends to heaven, he says, go. Holy Spirit's going to come upon you. You shall receive power. And they waited. They did not know what was going to happen <laughs> after uh, 10 days, suddenly, fire, they see fire in each other's head, they hear wind, they speak in tongues, they get ignited. Unexpected happening. Unexpected. Man, I'll tell you this. We're in a season of breakthrough. We're in a season of God doing new things. I, J Jeremiah 33.3 3 says, um, it says we're going to see things, you know, that we've never seen before. First Sam, First Corinthians two talks about no eye has seen, no ear has heard, what the Lord has prepared for those who love Him. It's unexpected. It's new. And then it, then it goes on to say, but these things have been revealed to you by the Spirit. It's happening. Well, hey, thanks so much for listening to this podcast. 
from Igniting Hope Ministries. And I, I want to just share just some great things coming up. Connie Jones, one of our great team members, is teaming with my wife, Wendy. Connie's leading it. Wendy's on a lot. I make a sneak appearance on a new online course that we have called Reigning in Life. That's going to be starting in mid May, you can go to ignitinghopeacademy.com and you can find that course. If you're looking for something to ignite your faith and hope, that is going to be so good. And then my brother Phil Backlin and I, Dr. Phil Backlin, he's the other Dr. Phil. We are starting in June, the first week in June, a 12-week online course called The Culture of Empowerment using the book that came out last year, The Culture of Empowerment Business and Organizational Version. Listen, this is a great leadership course. It's our strongest leadership course. It's, it's going to create healthy leadership, three, four hours a week of commitment. And during the, the whole summer, Phil and I are going to be on for Zoom question and answer times interaction looking for that. You can also do, uh, as part of the course, you can add an additional uh, coaching from either Phil or me uh, during the summer. And it's going to be really good. Somebody is listening to now, it's just you're feeling a spark. Go to IgnitingHopeAcademy.com. Hey, thanks for listening. Steve Backlund here, Igniting Hope Ministries. We're here to ignite your hope. There's no hopeless circumstances. There's just people who do not have hope. And once people get through hope, circumstances cannot stay the same. And remember, the joy of the Lord is your strength. We don't need strength at the end of the battle. We need strength in the middle of the battle. Joy is the strength. The joy of the Lord for us is the strength for our lives and we stir up joy through thanksgiving focusing on what more on what we have than don't have and delighting in the lord that i've covered hey i've been doing this on our podcast taking five seconds just for you to pray for igniting hope to pray for wendy and i as i'm recording this we're going to be going into our two-day abounding hope and joy conference that we're doing here in Redding, California, April 29th and 30th. And if you want that content, you can get the recorded version. Or if you're listening to this before the 29th and 30th, you'll be able to get online. If you want, you can go to Igniting Hope Academy and find Abounding Hope and Joy Conference. But I'd like you to pray five seconds for us. When you attach faith to five seconds of prayer, it's more powerful than 30 minutes of prayer without faith. So let's, let's pray. Amen, amen. Thank you for praying for us. Thank you for praying for our health and strength. Hey, if you want to sow into finances, sow finances into Igniting Hope, we'd love that to, for, to help get this message farther. You can go to ignitinghope.com and find donate and if you would like to receive our newsletter and you're not you can go to ignitinghope.com as well i'm going to be in germany in the middle of may going to be in grand rapids michigan in early june going to be in arizona and virginia in august all right, much love to you. Blessings. I look forward to having you again on another podcast from Igniting Hope Ministries. We hope that you have been blessed by this message. For more resources, you can visit our website at ignitinghope.com.